enormous responsibility is on the shoulders of anyone who is lucky enough to be successful. Perfection does not exist. There's a story behind every story. I saw hope and possibility and life and love and meaning inside of the difficulties. This is my story and this is my life and I can't hide it. The shock of the impact of what you actually seen and smelled and touched, it stays with you. Every single person can make a difference in the world and every little thing counts. I'm a guy who uh, want to write his own story. When I was growing up, Magic Johnson's image was everywhere. On TV, t-shirts, even lunchboxes. Like everyone else, I knew he was an amazing basketball player. But as a nine-year-old kid, what I didn't know was anything meaningful about HIV AIDS until Magic Johnson was brave enough to stand up and educate us all. But that's magic. He's a true leader, whether he's on the basketball court, running a business empire, or crusading for social change. Magic has always been in a league of his own, and that's why he's a shameless idealist. I was born in Lansing, Michigan, and uh, six sisters and three brothers. Just had a great childhood and amazing parents. I'm just like my mother with her smile. <laughs> and I'm strong like my father and have the, uh, he blessed me with great work ethic. My dad is a guy who uh, worked two jobs. He worked 30 years for General Motors. And then he also had a trash hauling service. And so every summer I worked every day with him. You know, that's where I really gained my work ethic from my dad. He said, you know what? If you don't become a perfectionist and if you don't do this job right, you won't put the same amount of time in to be a, a great basketball player or a great student. And that's when I, I learned how to really put everything into everything that I, that I would do in my life. That's when I became a person who was driven to be a perfectionist and, and to be great. And my dad showed me greatness is doing things right. I first fell in love with basketball as a little kid, really watching the game with my father. Every Sunday, the NBA would come on, and so uh, I would have to say it was probably five or six years old. And um, I just gravitated to the game, and uh, I wanted to play it no matter if the weather was good outside or not. If it was snowing too bad, I would shovel the snow off the court and play. I don't. I didn't care what the 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 weather was. I would play basketball because I loved it so much. I grew up poor. I had one pair of pants, three shirts to wear to school, having one suit to wear to church every Sunday. You think about a lot of times when you come from a big family. You get home late because you've been practicing sports. There might be a piece of bread left for you. You know, so I, I went to sleep a lot of times hungry, and, and sometimes not. I was supposed to go to an all-black school, but I was bus cross town to a white school. It was uh, probably the toughest day of my life because I was going to a school where I had really no friends. So it was a, a culture shock for me. I soon learned how to be a leader. The principal called me in after three weeks of racial tension and a lot of fights had broken out. Um, and he called me into his office and he said, uh, Irvin, uh, I want you to go talk to the white students and the black students because you gotta stop all the violence. I said, me? I'm 14 years old. I mean, yes, he says, that's what you're going to have to do, talk to both. And sure enough, I talked to both, and the racial violence stopped. It helped me uh, to grow as a, a young man. It helped me understand how to get along with people who don't look like me and who didn't live in my community. I went to our principal and said, we want to, at lunchtime, we want to have a dance hall in the school 
because now blacks and whites have learned to party together and socialize together. And we started that, and that's what took off from there. Right after that, basketball season started. I've always been about winning. And so I won a state championship in high school. And I had a pretty good game, 38 points, 19 rebounds, and 18 assists. And he, the sports writer came in, and he said, I want to give you a nickname. And he says, somebody's already called Big, Big E. Somebody's called Dr. J. I want to call you Magic. And I'm, I'm, I'm giggling as a kid. I never thought it would stick. But here I am, all these years later, I'm still Magic. <laughs> Magic Johnson had the natural-born talent and from an early age, the work ethic and passion to become one of the greatest basketball players of our time. And in 1979, all of his dreams began to come true. Yeah, in 1979, the Lakers decided that they wanted to draft me and, and pick me number one. I was blown away. I mean, Los Angeles, first of all, the Lakers. They had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I said, wow, if I'm gonna leave Michigan State University uh, and turn pro, what franchise would I wanna play for? And it was the Lakers. And so when they called, my parents and I, we just started crying because we were in disbelief that finally my dream and, and all the goals that I had set to make it to the NBA are finally coming true. When I got finally to the form in Los Angeles where the Lakers used to play, they showed me my locker with my name over it. And I just, I just broke down. Because I thought about all of those days that I had played on the playground in Lansing, Michigan. I thought about all those times when kids said, no way you would never make it to the NBA. And so all those things came to my mind and uh, it just was so emotional time for me. I'm just happy that I ended up in L.A. with the Lakers. On the interception, on the lazy pass, it is that rookie again, Magic Dishes Wilkes this time. Johnson drives the Lakers to a six-point lead. To talk about Larry Bird, well, first I have to say that I hated Larry Bird. You know, let me just be frank about that. Larry and I played against each other for the college national championship. He played for Indiana State, I played for Michigan State, and we end up beating them for the NCAA championship. Then he goes to the hated Boston Celtics. I go to the hated Lakers, right? Those two franchises hate each other. And so now we're getting ready to continue this rivalry in the NBA. And I tell you, every time the Lakers played the Celtics, every time I saw Larry Bird, I wanted to beat him so bad, and he wanted to beat me. And I think that's what made it special. We played each other in the 84 championships. His Celtics beat my Lakers. They ended up beating us 4-3 to win. In 85, we came back to play them again, 1985. My Lakers ended up beating his Celtics. And then in 87, I was able to hit the hook shot uh, in a crucial moment to put us up 3-1, and we went on to beat him. Race divided the country because all blacks cheered for the Lakers, all whites cheered for the Celtics. Uh, it was just that way. Then it was Magic Johnson, black player, Larry Bird, a white player. We didn't look at it like that, but we knew that it was there. It was tough to have that type of pressure put on both of us. But what made it great was the fact that we, I think we changed America too. Because Larry was so good and he was so great, blacks couldn't deny that he was <laughs> this unbelievable basketball player. <laughs> and just like whites had to say, wow, well, he, he not white, but he can play basketball, that Magic Johnson, so, you know. I think we actually brought the country together. Sports can do that. I 
thought I made all the right moves, all the right decisions. My life was going great. Then I got a phone call. Uh, Dr. Melman just rocked my world, and he told me that I had HIV. I was just devastated. I was still on the floor. I just couldn't believe it, you know. I'm now mad at the world, mad at myself. And then the crucial question was, what does it mean for me? What did it mean for my wife? And at that time, she was pregnant. So what did it mean for her and the baby? When something happens to you or you make a crucial mistake or you do something wrong, it not only affects you, but it also affects your family and your loved ones. The hardest thing was driving home to tell my wife. I told her that I had HIV and I told her that I could understand if she wanted to leave. And uh, this was probably the greatest moment and this is probably why I'm still living. It's because she said, hey, we're gonna beat it together. So my wife stayed. Then the good news came that she was fine and the baby was fine. It allowed me now to do what I had to do. And then she could become just my support system. My wife and I had to make a decision on whether to go public or not. The two of us had a, a, a long discussion and we thought about helping other people and saving other people. So uh, uh, we decided to go public. And then the next big decision was whether or not to retire or not from the game that I love. They said that uh, the 82 game schedule would affect my immune system. And so it might damage it. So I said, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna put myself in a life threatening situation. I can just retire. I want to live a long, healthy life with my wife. Because of the, the HIV virus that I have attained, I will have to retire from the Lakers. I plan on going on living for a long time. Magic Johnson shocked the world when he announced that he had tested positive for the HIV virus. The news left him feeling that there was no choice but to retire from the NBA. If that wasn't enough, even Magic's celebrity status couldn't insulate him from widespread discrimination. When you think about 20 years ago announcing HIV, yeah, everybody thought it was a white gay man's disease, you know? And so when I announced Everybody assumed I was gay. I had to tell people, no, I didn't get it that way. So you had to fight that first. Great thing was the fact that the white gay community took care of their people and educated their people. And the numbers went down. Now the heterosexual world is being affected by this disease. This disease was running rapid through the black community but everybody swept it up under the rug. They didn't want to hear about it. They didn't want to talk about it. And then they discriminated against everybody who had it that was black. And then our mindset had, in our community had been no way it'll happen to me. So that made the numbers rise in our community too. There was a lot of discrimination going on with people who were living with HIV at that time. Uh, they were really outcasts. And then here I am, Magic Johnson, I was getting some of that same feelings coming over to me. There was a lot of um, people who said that, uh, a lot of players who didn't want to play against me thinking they could get HIV from playing against me. And so when I announced I was going to come back, Carl Malone, Mark Price, a couple guys came out against me coming back. And so I decided to retire again and not come back. And so I did that twice. People were really scared at that time. People were uneducated at that time. Then I decided I'm gonna come back one more time because I had played in the Olympics on the Dream Team. Nothing happened to anybody. We won the gold medal. I played well. And so I said, you know what? I wanna end my own story. I wanna put the final chapter to my life. And I wanna retire like I wanted to retire. I wanna go out the magic way. So I decided to unretire. I'm 
calm. I'm not worried about whether it's criticism or not. I'm not. Before, you worried about that. But now I'm at peace with myself. I prayed on it, and I'm, I'm all set. I played a half a season, and it was great. I played well. Nothing happened to anybody. And I also wanted to show that people living with anything, whether it's HIV or any other disease, that they could get out there and still uh, play basketball, live a productive life. And so I did it not just for myself, but for a lot of other people. But man, it took a lot of work. It took a, a, a lot of people dying to get us to this point. We're still not there yet. We still got a lot of work to do. We're up for the challenge and up for the battle. You can't give up on life. You can't feel sorry for yourself. You, you take a little time for that, but then you got to get out of that. And then you got to keep living. You know, here I am 20 years, and I've been really positive, and I've been a person who's been really good and comfortable with my status of living with HIV. Growing up poor, you understand what it's like not having. Because somebody helped me become Magic Johnson, from Irvin Johnson to Magic Johnson. Somebody helped that poor, skinny kid. And now I want to help others reach their goal and dream because there were so many people telling me I could have got into crime. I could have got into drugs. But every time they were sta staring me right in the face, somebody said, nope, you go that way. No, do this. I started the Magic Johnson Foundation because when I think about young people who live in urban America, they need hope. They need pride. They need somebody to show them that they love them, they care about them, and somebody who cares about their community as well, to show them, be an example to them. Education is the key for our kids. If they're gonna go on and be successful in life, they gotta get a good education. So we have 150 students on scholarship, and we have 18 technology centers around the country that they can have access to a computer, because most minorities can't afford to have a computer in their, in their home. Then we bring HIV and AIDS trucks to the community so they can get tested right in the community. All those things are so important. God blessed me to be successful in life. I want to go back and bless others in the community and, and have them be successful and then make our community better and bring the pride back to our community. It's hard to imagine, but Magic Johnson's time as a basketball superstar was only the beginning of a brilliant career. Just as he dominated on the courts, Johnson is an MVP off the courts. He's passionate about bringing business opportunities to disadvantaged neighborhoods, and in his role as a leading HIV AIDS activist. I will always be happy about the things I've done away from the basketball court. I define being a champion by making other people better. That's how you win, by making communities better, other people better. See, you can't be blessed until you bless somebody else. You can't get something great until you do something great for somebody else. And that's what it's all about. Magic is the name he earned on the basketball court, but he lives up to it every day, engaging millions with his story. What's happening? That magic was never more alive than when he joined us at We Day, an event that inspires young people to stand up and change the world. Make sure that, first of all, you educate yourself, but then figure out how do you make your school better, and then how do you make your community better. And then with that blessing, then you can make the world better. What you're doing today is so important because you're gonna raise the awareness level of you young people coming together for a common good and a common goal, and that's to help people every single day, and that's powerful right there. 
they bless me back by showing me the love. And sometimes when you're living with HIV, you need something to motivate you and keep going. And today I got that. Those screams, those hugs, those pictures, those high fives. I got something to keep me going for the next 20 years. Thank you, I love you back too. You can all work together to give back to make the world a better place for everybody. That's what it's all about. We're gonna change the world together. I'm a positive person. I'm a guy who always says, you know, look, it's just another challenge in my life. I was challenged to be the first one in my family to go to college. I was challenged to make it out of mm, the ghetto. I was challenged, I grew up poor, but I knew that I was gonna uh, be successful in life. I was challenged because people said, no way at 6'9", I could be a point guard in the NBA. I had to prove them wrong there. They said, you know, no way I could go from the basketball court to the boardroom, so I had to prove them wrong again. And then there's no way I would be here 20 years after announcing HIV, and then I had to prove them wrong again. God bless you. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. I'm a guy who loves challenges. I would tell all young people out there to do the same thing. You know, people can't define your life or your career or who you are. Only you can do that. I'm a guy who uh, want to write his own story. And so uh, it's been a great ride.